business owners, you need to get the word out. Are you looking for brand exposure, business expansion, looking for new clients, hiring remotely for staff positions, or hiring new employees to open additional offices? Are you looking to advertise new projects, start business partnerships, or seeking new business opportunities? Do you need to highlight new upgrades, features, or products? Promote up and coming events, seminars, classes, or celebrate business anniversaries and achievements with the world. Now's the time to get your commercial featured on my show. Send me an email for package pricing and let's grow and expand your business together. How my journey began. It's graduation time. Family is very important to me, including my puppies. The Marine Corps played a huge role in my life and allowed me to be ambitious, inspiring, a mentor, and achieve all of my goals. As a financial expert, I've received multiple awards, done various events as a guest speaker all over the U.S. with my platform of creating healthy financial habits, along with having my own business, all leading up to my show. Come along for the journey. Go. Hello, Gems, and welcome. For the month of May, I wanted to do something special to celebrate all the different ways a female is considered a mother, whether it be to her own children, a mother to other people's children, both family and friends, or being a motherly mentor, just to name a few. Not all women want to be a mother in the traditional way of pregnancy, and we are going to explore some of those possibilities during this month. Here are some statistics on infertility. Infertility is the inability to conceive a child, not getting pregnant despite having carefully timed unprotected sex for at least one year. The cause of infertility may be difficult to determine, but may include inadequate levels of certain home hormones in both men and women and trouble with ovulation in women. About 9% of men and about 11% of women of reproductive age in the United States have experienced fertility problems. One third of infertile couples, the problem is with the man. And another one third of infertile couples, the problem can't be identified or is with both the man and the woman. Approximately one in eight couples are affected by infertility in the United States. That's about 6.7 million people each year who have trouble conceiving a child. A few causes of male infertility include swelling of the veins that drain the testicle, infections, ejaculation issues, antibodies that attack the sperm, tumors, undescended testicles, hormone imbalances, and defects of the tubules that transport the sperm. Now with those statistics, let's go ahead and get started. For today's guest, she was born in Tustin, California. Her favorite show growing up was Punky Brewster. Growing up, she wanted to have ideally two children and she currently resides in the beautiful sunny city of San Diego. Now, Gems, let's welcome retired Navy Chief and current NJ ROTC instructor and good friend of mine, Keisha Madison to the show. Welcome, Keisha, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely, so let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot of um, grounds to cover and I definitely want my gems to hear your story. So originally you wanted to go the adoption route. So how did that process go and, and what all did it include for you? Well, um, in the state of California, you cannot um, adopt a child through the state unless you have already um, been a foster parent. Wow. So it starts off with the fostering and then reunification is, is, is the state's you know, key function. Right. But um, so those children not necessarily are gonna be adopted by anyone. They're right. more than likely gonna go back to the parents. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I chose after research uh, chose to not go the adoption route. Right, because there's no certainty that you will have this amazing bond with the child and then they become yours if the parent was like, I want him back. Yes, so and, 
and if, if they if they get their lives together, then more than likely um, they're going to go back to their to their you know born parents to their born parents. And um, there's a big difference between the private and state sectors. Is that correct as well? Yes, and uh, the private sector is upwards of twenty thousand dollars in order to adopt a child, and you know a lot of people don't have that kind of funds, you know, right. to fund that, and so yes. That's that's the difference. That is definitely a huge difference with that. And when you decided to get on this journey, how was your family supportive of you? So these were all non-traditional ways. How were they supportive? Or, um, or what were their concerns, <laughs> shall I say? Well, um, they were valid <laughs> concerns. <laughs> uh, adopting a child that I know nothing about. Right. Um, and um, having no connection to this child and then having a connection to a child and fostering it. And then the child leaving me after a year or a year and a half of living with me. Right. So right. those were very, very valid concerns and they were concerns of mine also. So, right. yes. Right. Absolutely. Cause family always can sometimes give us those other, they give us their opinions, whether warranted or not, but they were valid in this case. Definitely valid. Yeah. <laughs> so valid. why did you decide to go the IUI route? Well, um, after researching and finding out that the military would help me um, to conceive a child, I said, OK, um, I was uh, then placed into a waiting list. It was probably about a year long uh, waiting list for the infertility clinic um, here in San Diego. And so. After that, you know, just the process started, you know, and I was like, okay, so what do I have to do? (laughs) And so I started the process. And there's something I want my gyms to know because it's completely different in every state. There's one cryo bank in California, correct? In San Diego. In San Diego. One in San Diego. Yes. Right. And so, and the, the nearest one was probably about an hour and a half away from San Diego. So if I was going to do this process, I would either go with the cryo bank here in San Diego or um, have to order it and have it shipped. To that one. And yeah. And so the military pays for everything except for the sperm, um, the donor, obviously, and the storage. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. And then, if, if you want to, if I wanted to store my eggs, that's another whole nother ball game. Wow. That was upwards of probably, I think they told me about 9,000. Just um, to store some things. To store my eggs, you know, for later retrieval and yes, so. How long do they <laughs> store them for? Do they tell you? Uh, I, I believe it's five years. Okay. But oh. it was still, you know, $9,000 <laughs> that I didn't have. <laughs> so, right. Because I'm just part. trying to say, you know, 9000 for five years. And I know we may hear five years, but five years goes by quick. You think yes. you have it. Next thing you know, they're like, um, so we're at four and a half years. What do you, you want to do? Or do you want right. to pay another storage fee? <laughs> you want to pay another storage fee. And I, the timing of my right. age wasn't on a, a factor for right. me either. So I didn't have five years to, to, <laughs> to retrieve eggs and <laughs> do all of that. So, yes. <laughs> I, I, I get it, girl. I get it. So how did you <laughs> choose the donor sperm? I love this part because people, um, they don't know that the, the intricacies, intricacies that you can choose the donor sperm. So how did you how do you choose? You have the one bank in San Diego and you're like, let's do it. I said, well, OK, so the first the first couple rounds, um, they give you they give you this uh, website and you use your login. I use my login. And then I was like, OK, so how am I going to choose the person that I want to have a child with? Right. Um, height, weight their occupation, um, their hobbies. There's so many things, you know, the color of their eyes. Right. Um, it, it tells you everything, you know, hey, um, their family history of medical right. stuff. Um, just all of those things went into choosing. And then um, 
here in San Diego, <laughs> there's, I guess, not an abundance of um, black donors. <laughs> so uh, I had the, I went with a, um, a Caucasian male for my first two uh, IUI um, cycles. So it is what it is. And, you know, <laughs> it, is what I, it, is. it is what it is. And you know, I tell people, they're like, oh, just do this. And I was like, no, you have no idea of the demographics of the Cryo Bank that's closest to you. Yes, you can outsource because that's what it's called if you want to go to a different bank. But now you're paying to have it shipped. You're paying for all this other stuff. So these totals are adding up just because you may want a certain type. Or you can say, you know what? I'm just going to go with what they have here. And Jims, let me tell you, I, I met Keisha in San Diego. When she <laughs> said there is not an abundance of Black men, there is not. And there, I believe her when she said there is not an abundance of Black men who provide their sperm towards these crown banks. So, yeah, hey, I let me tell you something. I, I had to go with what it. was available. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And speaking of the sperm, because now, you know, you have more ethnicities that are doing this. How often can they can they donate the sperm up to how many? Um, so they can only have between four and six actual live births. Right. So um, they they the cryobank, um, you know, talk hey, did you have, a, did you actually have a child? And then they'll say, okay, you can only have, you know, five more kids right. out there in the world. <laughs> so they, they have to limit it because some people are, you know, going in and, and <laughs> giving their samples often. <laughs> so they have to limit it. So right. yes, four, between four and six children is the maximum. It's the max. And that's good. Cause that's one fact that I actually didn't know. I just thought they could just, like you said, just come in, give samples at lunchtime and be good. So they're limiting. They're, yes, limited. <laughs> they're limited. They have some cutoffs. So they're like, Hey, Hey, I get it. You want to populate the world, but four to six is all you get. So that is something good to know. So what was the cost per cycle for you? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I only had to pay for the semen. So um, it was $500 each time. Right. And um, I went through three cycles. Um, and so, yeah, it was only $500. That's it. Um, which, you know, $500 is, is nothing to me, you know, because, you know, I was in the military, but right. it might be a lot for other people that are not able to conceive a child naturally. Yes. Right. But then the other alternatives, you know, the 9,000 for the storage. I know IVF is in the hundreds, um, definitely th not hundreds, but thousands and thousands more. So 500, we can take. So, I can take that. <laughs> so we can take that. So but how long is one cycle? Well, so it, it <laughs> the cycles okay. begin. It's it's a whole thing. Um, right. You have to give yourself shots. You have to take medicine. Um, I had to insert things into my cervix. Right. Um, I had to, like I said, I had to give myself shots daily and then it makes you ovulate. And then they'll tell you how many viable eggs you have. And then they'll say, okay, if you have too many, it stops the cycle because okay. you, you can't have more than triplets. So right. if you have four or five viable eggs, they're, they're going to say, no, we have to stop this cycle because we don't want you to have six kids at once. Right. <laughs> so, no. uh, so there's that problem. So it's, it's um, it, it, between three to six months each cycle, right. and depending on what happens in those cycles, um, depending on how many eggs you have available, right. viable eggs. So between six, three to six months, maybe nine months sometimes, right. just so that they can get it right. Um, so they make you ovulate, they make you do everything. Everything. Yes. And um, yeah, and I just wanted to bring that up because sometimes people think, oh, you just try, you know, these alternatives to pregnancy and then boom. No, it's a process. And like she said, yeah. vitamins between the injections, between the shots between coming in and getting evaluated and saying no, saying yes, move forward, adjust this. It is a process. So making sure that you 
even just mentally, financially, we talk about it, but even being mentally ready for that because it's months. It is literally yes. months that you're on this journey. And then, you know, and in the first two cycles, it didn't take. So, right. you know, we're looking, I was looking at, I was already in there two years before I actually, it actually worked. <laughs> yes. Me. So, yeah. And it, it probably could have been very, very expensive. And I'm, I'm thankful that I was in the military because uh, I don't I don't think I could afford it if, no. if I wasn't. A lot so. of people couldn't couldn't have afforded it. And so on that third time, um, tell them what happened, because you went with a different sperm donor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I found out that they had one black male donor and I was like, OK, maybe it was the donor. I don't know. So I said, let me switch it up. So I switched it up to the only male donor that they had. And he was a pro football player. <laughs> so I was like, hey, OK, all right. Give my child a fighting chance. <laughs> and hey. um, and I went with I went with that guy and then I got pregnant. <laughs> right. Wow. Yes. And... Go ahead. OK. Yes. Um, I got pregnant and. Um, and at 36 weeks, I um, went in for a routine, um, a routine check, and um, they couldn't find a heartbeat. Right. And so um, I had to be induced, and um, I gave birth to my um, son that was dead. Yes. Because yes. you, um, just to tell the gems here, when you're going through all of these cycles, you never know what it is. It could be the sperm that's not working. It could be the egg, like I said in the beginning of the statistic, it could be both, but trying to figure that out. So she did switch it up. She did have a successful um, pregnancy full term. So full term pregnancy, went to the labor and delivery ward, even had the baby shower just to, to find out that there wasn't an, an, an a heartbeat. And right. I always like to ask, you know, when the doctor delivers that, that news, um, do they tell you any of the reasons? Was it stress? Like, do they give you any type of, Hey, this is what happened. Um, so I could have gotten an autopsy, but it was going to take like 22 days oh, wow. for me to bury my son. And so I, I, I opted oh, out of that. And yeah. I just said, you know, God, God knows. And, but the, but the entire pregnancy, I was having issues. Okay. Like they couldn't find, a, they couldn't find his stomach. Um, he had irregular heartbeats. It was, it was like, Every single month, there was something going on. So I guess God said, you know, uh, no, this one, this one's not going to, it's not going to be good for you. So, right. yeah. So, and, and to this day, I still don't know, but I think it was stress from work. Right. Um, but, um, but I now have my baby girl. So, <laughs> uh that part uh and uh yeah we'll, yeah we'll get to that so i know okay. you're, we're getting to the fun stuff last you give y'all a little bit of, a little little bit of taste but we're we're gonna get to that in a minute so i know um just especially for age because i know this is something i was looking into and and i don't know that the doctors say that you are the, the title of a geriatric pregnancy oh yes for sure right. for sure i was because i was 40 and um, the f I was 40 with my first child and 42 with my second. So, yes, I was definitely geriatric um, after the 20th week. Um, I was go I was seeing the doctor twice a week, yeah. <laughs> every yeah. single week and getting ultrasounds twice a week. It, they were very, very on it because, you know, I was geriatric. Like you're not supposed to have a child in your forties. It's just not right. supposed to happen. Um, and so a lot of things can happen. You know, they, they did the test for like um, down syndrome yep. and genetic all kinds testing. of things. Yes. A lot of genetic testing, making sure that I was okay. Babies were, babies were okay. And, and we, 
we never know why things happen, but they do. <laughs> yeah, we never know. And I always say, you know, even though they were labeled you as geriatric, but in order to use that to your benefit, you had more doctor's visits, you had more testing, you had the, it's not exercise too, too much, you know, let's try to keep the stress levels down because of the age. And we're yes. probably the same age. So trust and believe I'll be geriatric age too. So in the time, okay. so I just like to just be mindful of the ladies who are going through the process, even later on in life that, Hey, these, this is what the society and the doctors are going to label you at, but just try to use that to your advantage and just say, well, I get a lot more things done with it and it's okay. They're calling me geriatric. I don't care. There's women who are successfully having um, pregnancies well into their forties and of course fifties as well, even though we may not want to wait that long. <laughs> their budget is definitely different than ours. I can say that. So they can't work here. Exactly. Have, have exactly. So now for the fun stuff. So you had the unfortunate um, passing away of the first pregnancy. You PCS, which is to all my gyms who are not military, is a permanent change of duty station to Hawaii. Aloha. And <laughs> what alternative fertility options were you thinking of at that time? Because you were definitely thinking of other options. Yes. So as soon as I got there, um, I waited a little bit because I had transferred mm, probably about nine months after my son passed. So I, I was like, OK, do I want to do this again? Am I going to have heartbreak again? You know, all of those things are going on in my mind. And I was like, no, I, I really want a child like I really want a baby. So um, I got into um the hospital there and in Hawaii and I got into their infertility clinic. Um, I was able to get in and um, they told me that my options were only IVF. Right. I could not do IUI because I was at the time 41. Okay. Um, and they were like, no, no, you're, and your, your levels are really low. We don't even know if you still have any eggs available and if you do, you know, this is what your levels are. And, you know, we can't guarantee that you're even going to be able to conceive a child. And I was like, right. okay. So I, um, I researched IVF and I was in the clinic and everything. And then. Well, wait a minute. What percentage what, did the doctors give you for pregnancy? Is point zero. Tell them the number. Point zero zero seven six percent that I could ever have a child again. With minimum to no viable eggs, and IVF was your only solution. <laughs> only option. This is it. So this is it. This is it. This is it. This is what the doctors say. And during this time of reflection, as I say, and on your becoming a mother, what happened? So I I met a young man, and uh, I had a child the natural way. <laughs> she had a child. <laughs> The natural way, guys. Yes, yes. Uh, my my doctors, I went in for surgery and they have to do a pregnancy test. And, uh, you know, my surgeon comes in and he's like, uh, we can't do your surgery today. And I was like, well, what's going on, doc? You know, is everything OK? And he's like, no, everything's fine. He's like, congratulations, you're pregnant. I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, I was floored. I stood there for a good five minutes and he's like, this is not a good thing. And I was like, yeah, it's a good thing, but what do you mean I'm pregnant? Yes. So I, yes, I found out I was pregnant through my surgeon. Wow. <laughs> so. And, you know, I always say, you mentioned it before, there's signs and there's doctors and then sometimes it's just God's timing. Sometimes Agreed. it's just God's timing. Agreed. And Agreed. again, I when you told me that 0.007% is not going to work for you, IVF, no viable eggs. And I remember when you're like, yay. And I'm like, oh, see, sometimes you just have to have hope. And so <laughs> how was this pregnancy? This pregnancy was very stressful, oh. very stressful. Um, I didn't tell anybody until I was about three months. Mm -hmm. And then um, we announced um, to our families 
Um, and at the time we weren't together. So right. it was more like, okay, how are we going to do this? Um, and it, it was very, very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I was, I was on high alert. Right. Um, and then, you know, and, and like I said, the 20th week, um, I was going into the doctor, they were doing all the genetic testing, they were testing for everything. Right. I, I even went in for an MRI just to make sure that the baby was okay, my body was okay, my body structure was going to be able to, everything. everything. So, everything, everything. Everything. And then, and then she didn't want to come out. <laughs> I was 40 weeks and two days and I was like, Oh God, she's, she's got to come out of here. And so, yeah. And then she was born, um, seven, seven pounds, 13 ounces. And <sighs> yes. Beautiful baby girl. What is, if you could give us a <laughs> one good memory about being pregnant, what would it be? Hmm. Just uh, uh, seeing my body grow. Yeah. Um, again, and just knowing that I was doing everything that I could do to make sure that my little girl made it here safely. Yeah. Um, just, 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 you know, I've got some pictures of me standing like at the pool and I was like, oh yes, that was, that was, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. Good, good. And so <laughs> bouncing beautiful girl was born she's major and she's for the gym she is a mini me okay like that's Keisha baby okay you can't go to work and be like well no 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 mm -mm. that Keisha baby she got a definitely spitting image of her her daughter is amazing I love your story I love you sharing that with us and we're definitely going to be inspired by it so yes <laughs> please. <laughs> Absolutely. So gems, it's that time for your financial tips. So your financial gems for today are pay off all your bills. ASAP. Stop putting it off till longer. If you got the money, pay it off. What are you waiting for? Let's not do that. Number two, save as much as you can, whether it's a few hundred dollars this month, 10% of a paycheck next month. Something is better than nothing. Be sure that you're saving on a continuous basis. Number three, Keeping your credit score above an 800 so you don't have to worry about not getting the best interest rates on major prod purchases. And I know you people may think 800, but that's really, really a good number to strive for because anything after that, they're going to be calling you. Hey, do you, what do you need from us? We, can, we have money to throw away. Trust the belief. That is definitely a good feeling when you have people asking you for, do you want a loan? I'm like, I, didn't, I didn't know I had something to buy, but... <laughs> that is one of those really good, good causes for having an 800 credit score. Number four, be willing to make financial adjustments and sacrifices for the things you want and need. Because during this story, as you said, she may not have been able to do it if it was more than 500. So if, again, you're not military, you don't have to be, but just know your budget so that if you want these things in life that you are budgeting for it. And number five, stay true to your dreams your goals, because life has a way of working things out in your favor. I love it. We saw it with this story. She stayed true. She said, you know what? I, I want to be a mother. I get it. 0. 0.0076. I get it. IVF. I get it. Only one cry roll bank here. Move to Hawaii. No cry roll banks. Stay right. Like none. <laughs> None. Zero. <laughs> Zero. But she stayed to her gut dream of wanting to become a mother. And she did. So Keisha, it is our show custom to have every guest provide our gems with an inspirational quote or a favorite saying. What is your personal inspirational quote or favorite saying you would like to share with us today? Well, um, I've, I've lived by this one. Um, the only difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that little extra. Um, I always live by that. Like just that little extra to, to give people a little oomph or give, give my daughter a little oomph. And I, I always live by that. I have to live my life with that little extra all the time. I love that. Extra, extra. Going the extra step. We say it, but now living by it. Thank you so much, Keisha, for being a guest on the show today and being part of the journey. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, Gems. Creating healthy financial habits is a lifelong commitment. Remember, without change, there be no butterflies. Changing habits, changing lives, and changing futures are all up to you. Till next time, Gems. Take care and be blessed. Thank you.